Namaste, Salam, Shalom, greetings. Um, I'm going to keep this short because I don't want to stand between you and the food. And <laughs> um, no, thank you so much, One Milwaukee. Uh, we do feel like family in here, um, and there's, it's beautiful to see so many familiar, diverse faces. I remember getting another award in, when we were at the Mercedes-Benz dealership. As far as being the director of Interfaith, even when I came on, I didn't realize that the learning curve was going to be so steep. Um, I follow in the footsteps of Tom Heinen. Um, I'm the fifth executive director, the first non-Christian director um, in our 50-year history. And there's quite a legacy uh, with that. We get to follow in the footsteps of giants, and, and the only reason that I'm here, up here, is because I have a beautiful community, and I consider all of you those giants. Seven years ago, uh, our lives changed, and I say ours um, as I sit here with my wife. Um, at that time, she was seven and a half months pregnant with our third child when a shooting happened. That shooting uh, was one of the deadliest committed in a place of prayer uh, in nearly 50 years at that time. Sadly to say, that shooting has been far surpassed by other shootings in places of prayer, at schools, um, just about anywhere you can name it, it's happening. Uh, last week, Governor Tony Evers called for a special session, and that special session was to take on ERPO laws, which are emergency removal or protection order uh, of guns from those that are deemed dangerous to themselves or somebody else. Now you would think that that's kind of a common sense type of thing. If somebody is a known threat to themselves or somebody else, you should be able to confiscate or at least ask the person to give up their firearms. But what happens is oftentimes these discussions are very contentious and reasonability oftentimes leaves. Um, and it, it's up to us as leaders to kind of have those discussions and keep having those discussions. And as, as, as the recipients before me said, to be brave. We have to ask ourselves to continuously be brave. And sometimes what that looks like is a sense of, I'm exhausted, I'm empty. I had a client last night that I was working with um, and I asked her a question. I said, do you feel full or do you feel empty? And she says to me, I feel empty. And uh, I said, explain that. Why do you feel that way? And she starts to explain it. And I asked her, why can we not embrace the emptiness? Why do we need to feel full all the time? And that's oftentimes when leaders, I see leaders, it's not that we're really empty. It's that our bucket continuously keeps getting bigger. So we feel empty. But I know, as well as you know, that all of us, we want to dive, one, on eat, exhausted, that what we did in our lives matter, that because we had the power to do so, we did it with compassion, and we did it with love. St. Augustine talked about this, and I'm, I'm a sick talking about St. Augustine. So, <laughs> he talked about, he talked about love, and, and how we sometimes, within our country, kind of misunderstand it. We understand love as this infatuatory, sort of childish relationship with it. I fell in love with somebody. Right? We hear this quite often. I fell in love. For those that were married for a long time, you know, know that it's not a falling. It's not something that you lose control. Maybe you do. But it's a commitment. It's something that you continuously come back to and ask yourself, why? Why am I doing this? Why? And, and, and really, it's because you believe in one another. Interfaith, the first day of um, sort of the inauguration, my wife was there and we had 20 different judicatory faiths. Everyone from, you know, the Episcopals, the Catholics, the Lutherans, the, um, you know, the Buddhists, the Hindus, the Muslims, the, the Jewish community, the um, Presbyterian, the UCC, the, you know, I don't want to forget, no, <laughs> any faiths, but each and every one of these faiths said a prayer, and all of their prayers were laced in oneness, were laced in a sense of, we are all one. And not to say that our uniquenesses aren't beautiful, but at the end of this lifetime, we came from the same creator and we'll go back to the same creator. 
And so what we do in this lifetime is a search. Search to find the, find those uniquenesses um, special. So one Milwaukee really symbolizes that, is that if we can see the diversity as a strength, and if we can see the city as one city, we can see this as a beautiful city. And, and I thank you for this award from the bottom of my heart. God bless you.